time to look now back at the last few days on Springwatch 09. It's been a hugely emotional week. Chris Cape, Mother Nature, she's written us some gripping storylines. She has. Well, I mean, the week started um, with us all sort of sunbathing in beautiful, beautiful sunshine. And um, I'm pleased to say that the week started as well with me being fantastically smug because um, many of the birds that I predicted <laughs> would fledge and old Packham here went, not a <sighs> chance, they're nowhere near fledged. Um, so, yeah, I had a very, very cracking start to the week. A great start to the week. Then, of course, Chris, the drama kicked in. It did. Lap We'd left for our, our lap wings at the end of last week with four young, you know, running around out on the scrape. And through a series of rather complex events, we deduced that one of these young had been taken by our kestrels. So the kestrels were watching on one hand, the lapwings on the other. The male had predated this, and eventually the female retrieved it from her larder, where she stores food, brought it in and fed it to the chicks. And we knew that it was, the, it was that animal, because we, we could see the little ring on its foot. So, yes, of course, this is tugging at everyone's heartstrings, but, you know, this is what Swing Watch is all about. It's real wildlife in real time, and, 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 it, and really... There's, a, there's something beautiful about that. There's just something about it being recycled. It's really tough on the old lapwings, but it's nature working. It's functional. It didn't die for no reason at all. It sustained the kestrels. It's now part of a kestrel chick, and there's a romance there, for me at least. Well, it, it is that natural cycle. It is about survival of the fittest. And we saw that also in Wales with, with Simon's dippers, those, those poor chicks about to rush into a torrent of water. Oh, talk about heart springs and um, yeah, drama. Yeah, I mean, it really was. And, and, and I think, as Simon said himself, you know, it seemed to be the perfect nest site. You know, no predators could get in there. Um, it was tucked away in a wonderful, secretive place. Um, but with this big downside, which was the only way to fledge out of that nest was to fall into, as you said, a great torrent of water through a sort of sluice gate and out into the river. Now, dippers, as we all know, are, are very adept at being in water, but if you've just fledged, I mean, usually our birds, the birds we were watching fledging, have a, a little bit of time to get used to being out of the nest. You know, it's, it's quite discombobulating for them, and you sort of see them out slightly blinking in the sunlight going, crikey, where am I? You know, and quite often they'll just hop back into the nest. For the dippers, it really was sink, and, sink or swim. Why do you think it is that the parents, they didn't go and rescue it. What, what, I mean, realistically, what could they have done? You know, I mean, it, 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 there wasn't anything they could do. They couldn't kind of throw out a small, dipper-sized, you know, rescue, whatever it's Life called. Boy, Life yeah. boy, exactly. Um, you know, they, they, I don't think there's anything they could have done. No, I don't know. I wonder, what, what were they thinking? Wouldn't it be amazing to get your mind into that of a dipper when you put so much effort into rearing this youngster and then almost immediately, at the very first hurdle, it falls? I mean, do they think disappointment? Do they think failure? Do they think desperation? But they're clearly thinking something because the, you know, the innate drive to keep it alive was there. You saw that later yeah. when they were trying to feed the dead chick that was dead. So there's a drive going on. It'd be amazing to know what actually is going on in their minds, wouldn't it, really? But one thing for sure, I don't think it's the consciousness that we have. It's more an absolutely, you know, phenomenally powerful drive to survive mm -hmm. at the expense of everything mm -hmm. else. But very sad that this one failed to survive. Away from the birds, we've seen lots of mammals this week. Gordon's been playing with badgers and cats, somewhat surprisingly, down in Essex. And you had a great moment with the otters earlier oh, this week. That, that was that was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was it was it was kind of ironic, really. We were on a film uh, about urban otters. Uh, you know, the the wonderful good news story that our rivers are, are getting cleaner and otters are coming back into our cities. And uh, I use um, what's called open talkback, so I hear everything in my little earpiece here um, that's going on while the programme's going on. People think I'm mad that I can have all these voices in my head at the same time, but that's just the way I've always worked. We've always had it's another story. Tell us another story. Yeah, after the therapy. Yeah, after the therapy. Got rid getting of getting most of the it. early ones. Um, yeah. And but this I one heard. Voice. Well, yes, I heard. I heard one voice. The voice of Joe jo Charlesworth, who's one of the specialist, um, you know, the mini camera guys, and I just heard him go, I think that's an otter, and someone going, no, it's not, and I said, and he's like, I think it is, I think it is, and I'm hearing in my ear, we've got it, we've got it, and I can then just say, and we can show you this, that was literally moments ago, this is what was happening. 
your face was an absolute picture. Absolute delight for the second time this week because you, you've been busting all week with the Bustards. Indeed, the Bustards were a great story and for the first time in 170 plus years they had uh, two chicks um, hatched this week and I was down there last Sunday. I was driving up the motorway to get here, got the call, turned round and drove maybe a little faster than I was when I was leaving <laughs> um, so that I could see those chicks and you know and yeah and I was I, and, and I was one of the first people to see them and you know that was very special and be, to be able to break the news as well was a real privilege because I followed this project for some time and so yeah to be able to say you know Spring Watch world exclusive bastards back Fantastic. in Britain yeah it was great really good and as the secret is now out on the Moles blog and you've mentioned it on radio this week about your song lyrics maybe Maybe we have some more for next week? I don't know. Maybe that joke isn't funny anymore. New inventions? No, that was a Smith song title. So, yeah, pass me to... <laughs> I'm too young for the Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, that one slipped in so easily, maybe there's a chance for another four, who knows? There's another gag there, but we won't. <laughs> so, but new inventions. Yeah, I've maybe? Got, yeah, yeah, I've got one more invention up my sleeve, but I'm going to spring it on Kate at the last. Oh, we can look forward to that then for next Thursday. Guys, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, Spring Watch, of course, back Monday, 8 o'clock on BBC Two and live webcam action here online throughout the weekend. <laughs>